All right, related very much to that discussion of the CDC and how people are feeling about it is new polling data showing what Americans' top priorities are for 2022 as opposed to 2021. Let's go ahead and throw this tear sheet up on the screen. Um, the big headline here from the AP is inflation up, virus down as priorities in the U.S. And actually, I mean, listen, this is often the case. The economy is the number one issue. Um, the number of people who name COVID as uh, a top issue of concern has fallen significantly year over year. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this next tweet that we have up on the screen with some of the numbers. Um, so you now have 37% who named the virus as one of their top five priorities. That is down from 53%. So last year it was a majority. Now it is, you know, not a majority, <laughs> 37%. Uh, while 68% said the economy was a top priority. So that's almost 70% of Americans who view the economy as a top priority. The economy is always a top priority, but mm -hmm. I think um, this dovetails with the conversation we had yesterday about how the Biden administration is really trying to spin this economy as great yes. and try to convince people through misleading charts and certain statistics that actually things are great in your life, actually the economy is roaring and, you know, don't believe what your experiences in your day-to-day -day life believe this super misleading chart that we put up <laughs> in the White House. That's just not going to work, um, especially when you have, I mean, this really hits home when people go to the grocery store and they see that their dollar doesn't go as far as it was and they're having to make cut cutbacks and, and plan for that. And they feel very unsettled about the future. And part of why they feel unsettled is not just that reality, but the failure to project a vision, the failure to project that the Biden administration is in touch and cares about those concerns rather than just trying to write them off writ large. So um, very interesting data here. I mean, if you turned it around, if the Biden administration handled this properly, you could see it as a win for them. So say, look, people aren't as concerned at the, mm -hmm. about the pandemic anymore. But because they haven't shifted their footing to say, look, things are a lot better with the pandemic and now we're going to focus on the economy in an aggressive way. Instead, this is sort of seen as a rebuke of Dems where, you know, they're seen as being out of step and out of touch with the primary concerns that people have at this I point. I completely agree. You know, what's really fascinating in this poll is to see not only where people are, but the differences in from one year ago. So mm -hmm. as you said, there's been a minus 16 drop in the amount of people who care about COVID as their top priorities, dropped from in the mid 50s up down to 37. But the economy has actually remained static at 68. So it's not that people always cared more, uh, more about COVID, it's that the, there's the differential between them has dropped dramatically. The other ones that are interesting that are increased in salience are immigration, not a good issue for the Biden administration. And then the only other, actually that's literally the only one where there's been a dramatic increase there. I think gun violence was another one. Or well, gun, gun issues. Gun right? issues. So that's a, that's a very interesting way of phrasing it. That is an it. interesting that. way of phrasing it. It means a lot to whoever, from one person in Texas versus Connecticut, not exactly yeah, the same thing. But it seemed to me that those two things indicate um, you know, the rise of these sort of like culture war. Yes. Oh, concerns. personal finances and cost of living. That was another one. But I, I guess you could loop that into the economy. The stuff that's been dropping is very interesting to me too. Politics in general has been dropped in interest. I think that's probably a good thing. Climate change, relatively static. Foreign policy, static. Education, static. Racism and racial inequality, nine point drop from 2021. You know, I actually yeah. thought the education one was kind of interesting because yeah, there was that. a lot made of education in the Virginia race. I, I know. And then we both said at the time, yeah. This is not the real story. The real story is, you know, people feeling bad about the economy and yeah. feeling like your promise to get us back to normal ultimately was a fraud. Um, I think this helps to bolster that point that I'm sure there were some people who were motivated by education on the margins in Virginia, but I think the bigger story of what's going on is in these economic It's a very numbers. online, GOP-based thing. This yes. is, and I've been trying to hammer this home to people. I'm like, look, I agree critical race theory is bad, but a lot of people just don't care whatsoever. And, you know, I'd point to the Dems, too. Right now, the Biden administration is going all born on voting rights. People don't care. 
Okay. Where is they this want, on the, that yeah. on this list? Where is that on the list? And you can you can go after me, blah blah blah, if you want. People will worry about the price of gas and the price of food and the fact that their kids are in school one day and then not in school the other day. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, let's put the next one up there in terms of the people who are naming their top five. Or sorry, yeah, this is the number of retirements which we wanted to pair with this because I think this is very important. Record number of Democratic retirements and people were pointing there, Crystal, to represent. Ed Perlmutter, his district got redistricted. It was like a D plus 10. Now it's a D plus three in terms of the general average. And he's retiring, indicating there that it would be very, very difficult. So you just look at that long list, 26 incumbent Democrats who are retiring. Some of this is uh, people because of redistricting and the shrinking number of mm -hmm. districts and all of that. But a lot of that, and as we saw this in 2018, a lot of Republicans retired at that time too, simply to not have the indignity of losing their incumbent seat. Or, it's a very interesting yeah, uh, phenomenon. Also, um, it's not just the fear of their uh, their own loss, but also being in the minority is not oh, as yeah. much fun yeah, as being in the majority. So <laughs> if you're someone who's, you know, who's actually interested in being involved in the mechanics of governing, I'm not saying that these people actually are, but it's a lot more fun to be in the majority, have more power, et cetera. So if you were kind of thinking of retiring anyway, now is a good moment because then you are saved right. the potential indignity of losing your seat and you're saved from having to sort of sweat it out in the minor minority for a couple years. Yeah, I mean, the House already, years. in my opinion, kind of sucks. So to be a backbencher in the House and in the minority, well, that is a real that's, indignity. That's <laughs> rough. It's having, not fun. Having to show up to some, like, uh, what is a committee on agricultural products and then you don't even get to send a question or whatever because you are one of the minority members who gets two minutes, that is very grim. Personally, I'd like to see more of these people retire. Yeah, so the longer this agree. list is. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> let's get some Republicans on that Pelosi list. Let's on go. That list. Why not? God, I know. I mean, she's so unbelievable. And I, some of these people, I mean, all, the other thing is like the Dem caucus is extremely old. The Republican caucus is kind of old. The Dem caucus is way older. So some of these folks, it was time to hang up their hat. Anyway. Absolutely. I just want to circle back to one thing, which is that yeah. the lack of the ability for the administration to understand that poll, which has been so self-evident now for some time, yeah. is just amazing. I mean, you even see, and they trotted out, I thought it was amazing, in this piece, an interview with the Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, and he was like, look, I get it, pandemic fatigue is real, but as a doctor, you know, what we have to do is go after the health problems and try to continue to make people understand that this is a, way, a, a problem. And the White House actually is trying to do the layup, as you said. They're yeah. like, look, yeah, people are less concerned about COVID because of all the good stuff that we've done. I don't think anybody agrees with that whatsoever. So you both see an institutional failure on COVID and you have the lack of connection on the uh, economy. I was thinking about this. You know, they rolled out their new uh, personal testing plan. Yeah. Oh, this is incredible. This is the biggest joke I've ever seen. You get eight tests a month that have to be reimbursed. If you buy a test, if that's you have out, insurance, right, right. If you have insurance with what is it, thirty million Americans don't. Uh, by the way, some tests are outside network, so. Insurance companies oh have to reimburse you up to $18 is, on those tests. It's a disease. It's like, this brain what disease, is this? This neoliberal brain yeah. disease. They have to make everything so freaking complicated. Yeah, it's like, oh, I have to Just apply. Just give people and, tests. Yeah. How complicated is that? Jesus Christ. I'm going to go buy. To, yeah. They say, I read the guy in system where they're like, keep your receipt. Send it in. No one's do is it, it in right. network? Is yeah. it out in network? We're going to incentivize them to do X and Y and Z. It's like, Jesus Christ, this isn't complicated. Just give people tests. This is like yeah, so somebody. emblematic of the neoliberal brain disease that makes everything way more complicated and way less successful than it ultimately should be. Um, yeah. yeah, that was really super annoying to Good see. Good luck, that. folks. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.